ज्वाइन कर लेंगे कैन आई शेयर माई स्क्रीन मैम थोड़ा सा टाइम आप ट्राई करके हाँ। देख लीजिए इतने नहीं अभी नहीं हो रहा है अभी नहीं हॉट हाउस डिसेबल पार्टिसिपेंट स्क्रीन शेयरिंग ओके मैम नहीं वो फिर एबल कर देंगे सर ना ठीक है एक्चुअली हम थोड़ा सा ऑन करेंगे शीतल अशोक शीतल ने ज्वाइन किया है यस अशोक बट मोस्ट ऑफ एम फॉर्म स्टूडेंट एम जॉइन वैसे हमने बी फॉर्म फाइनल ईयर और एम फॉर्म के लिए रखा था बट हो सकता है बी फॉर्म के कुछ और ज्वाइन कर ले मैम रूम में कई बार दिक्कत हो जाता है इंटरनेट पर यू म्यूट है कई बार अशोक इस वाले इंटरनेट से कर अशोक आप को होस्ट बना दो ना स्पीकर को मैम को मुझे ऑलरेडी होस्ट बना दिया सर वैसे नहीं देखो आप चेक करो ना किस किस को बना रखा है आपने मुझे तो है कि आप ओनली यू आर द होस्ट ठीक है हाँ मैं हूँ मैम डॉक्टर मीनाक्षी गर्ग को भी आप को होस्ट बनाइए हो गया हो गया ठीक है नाउ इट्स ओके सर शुरू करें हाँ शुरू करें मैम जी हाँ जी सर शीतल बेटा यू कैन पुट ऑन योर कैमरा आल्सो यस शीतल मीनाक्षी एक बार थोड़ा सा कुछ फॉर्मल उसके बाद वी विल स्टार्ट शीतल आपको आवाज आ रही है बेटा यस शीतल यस मैम यस मैम ओके आप यस मैम एम आई ऑडिबल टू एवरी मैन यस यस शीतल यू आर ऑडिबल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई एम शीतल फर्स्ट ईयर आई एम वेरी डाइटफुल यू ऑल आर हियर गैदर्ड फॉर यूज एंडिव गेस्ट लेक्चर ऑन पोस्ट अप्रूवल एक्टिविटीज आर रेगुलेटेड परस्पेक्टिव The guest lecture is being organized by TNP Cell in collaboration with Department of Animal Sciences, JSR. I'm really excited to uh, introduce our Dr. Minakshi Gargam. Currently, Ma'am is serving as an associate professor, School of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Dipsaru. Dr. Minakshi, Ma'am has done her 
Dr. Harisingor University, Sagar, Madhya Pradesh. She has qualified in the year of 1999. Ma'am has watched media of regulatory affairs relation development. She has worked in Dabur Research Foundation and Francis Kabi Oncology Limited companies for more than 17 years. She is having more than 20 national and international publications. Dr. Minakshi Garg, ma'am, has been awarded four patents. Beside this, she has published a chapter and attended numerous training, workshops, and conferences. She is guiding PG as well as PhD scholars in her department. A very warm welcome to you, ma'am. Now, I would like to welcome Director of TNP Cell, Sri Pratap Malik, sir. My heartiest welcome to the chairperson of our department, Professor Miras. Welcome to Dr. Sunil, sir, Dr. Rikha, ma'am, and coordinator of TNP cells. I would also like to welcome respected faculty members of our department and all the students who are here to attend the today's lecture. Before moving forward, I uh, before moving forward, I would like you to briefly introduce our department, Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. Was started way back in the year uh, 1995. Since its establishment over the years, department have emerged as a reputed institution, providing education in pharmacy. Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences has ranked 27th as per NRF ranking 2021. Our department offers undergraduate to postgraduate in pharmaceutical chemistry, pharmacology, and pharmacognosy. Research department is imparting quality education and research with a team of 14 faculty members and seven contractual teachers. In the last five years, our department has documented nearly 250 publications in general of national and international repute with average impact factor of 3.47. Our students have access to major sophisticated instruments necessary for research in our department. And Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Central Instrumentation Laboratory. Our alumni are serving as health professionals in various government organizations and private health sector within and outside India. Students passed out from Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences working with reputed companies of pharma sector, including Sanofi, Torrent Pharma, Perexel, Equia, Novartis, Belco Pharma, Sun Pharma, Dr. Reddy, etc. Now I would like to request uh, Pratap sir to welcome our worthy guest, Dr. Menakshi Gargamam. Thank you, Sheetal Sardana, for a very beautiful introduction of uh, our today's keynote speaker as well as uh, Pharmaceutical Sciences Department. So here, uh, on behalf of uh, Guru Jambeshwar University of Science and Technology, Hisar, and especially Training and Placement uh, Department, which takes care centrally for all the departments of uh, our university, uh, I, heartiest, I express my heartiest welcome Gratitude, thanks to Dr. Minakshi Garg, who has uh, spared her very precious time to interact with our students. So Dr. Minakshi, as uh, told by Sheetal, is working as Associate Professor in DPSRU, Delhi. And uh, she is having very rich experience, which is uh, of academic nature as well as industrial nature also. And it is the perfect uh, blend when uh, someone who is uh, uh, interacting with the students is having academic experience as well as industrial experience and we are very fortunate that uh, uh, such a speaker is uh, today with us. I also uh, welcome and uh, thank chairperson of uh, this department of pharmaceutical sciences, Professor Sumitra and Dr. Sunil and our very active and uh, enthusiastic training placement coordinator, Dr. Rekha, who always uh, keeps on uh, motivating the students for organizing such uh, programs. I also appreciate the efforts of uh, all the club coordinator students who themselves uh, designed this program. They thought that uh, it is very necessary to organize such type of events. And they decided, designed, and uh, uh, today this program is being conducted due to their efforts only. So my special uh, you can say congratulations and appreciation for all the club members of this industry interaction club. All the students uh, know this fact very well that uh, uh, we being in the university are uh, mo most of the time we, we are uh, in the academic world only and uh, for becoming employable it is very very necessary to be aware what is going on in industry. So such type of industry interaction programs help the students about the uh, latest trends, technologies, practices of the industry. 
and uh, uh, today this blend of academics as well as industry will help us in this manner so my uh, special thanks again to dr minakshi and uh, it is very good that more than 50 students have joined this webinar so today's webinar is going to be very very beneficial for all of you so without taking much time again welcome to one and all present in this webinar thank you jai hind jai bharat Dr. Pratap, thank you so much for the nice introduction and uh, Sheetal also a big thanks to you. And uh, I would like to tell that this university is very close to my heart because I was the first student of this university. Somehow I left this university and joined Sagar University, but still this university is very close to my heart. When she told 1995, I was remembering my years when I joined this university, Guru Jambeshwar University. Okay, so we can but call you... Was we can call you uh, alumni to some extent. Yeah, you may. <laughs> it's up to you. How you think. <laughs> because it is in your memories now also, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, I was remembering when I joined in 1995, building was under construction. No labs were there. Only two teachers were there. Niru, ma'am, and uh, Mishra, sir, was Mishra there. sir were there. <laughs> that was the beginning of the Department yeah. of Pharmaceutical Sciences over here. So I have uh, seen the building stone of your uh, university. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so now I think, I think actually, I can... actually you can uh, start. Yeah. So uh, more of a webinar, it can be interactive section in, uh, if anyone has any doubt related to industry, related to placement or anything related to interview, you can without any hesitation, uh, stop me and ask anything. Because whenever you go for an interview, uh, you are just a raw, you don't think that you know everything. You can ask me anything. Because we have taken thousands of interviews. And we don't expect that the student should know everything technical. The attitude should be very good. So that part we can take later on. Let's discuss whatever our uh, today's topic is. So if uh, anyone has any doubt, you can stop me in between and ask. So I will be discussing on post-approval activities, a regulatory perspective. Whenever the formulation development is done, we think that the part is over, formulation is completed, no work is done, but there is a lot more to be done after that. Formulation development is a small thing. Product is made, but there are a lot of activities. Once the product is approved, it is submitted to the authority like US, Europe, or all over the world. When the product is submitted to the authority, there are several changes need to be done for the betterment of the product that comes under post-approval activity and the regulatory department is there to take care of those activities. So in today's presentation, we will be discussing about uh, Europe, how the post-approval changes uh, are done in Europe, in US, in Canada, and in Asia. So students get confused between Asian students. Generally speaking, it is Asian. It is not Asian. It is Asian. And it is a very common question in the interview. And students say it is Asian. It's Asian, Association of Southeast Asian Nation. So India is a part of ASEAN or not? India is not a part of ASEAN. Remember this. Ma'am, have you shared your screen? Yes, I have shared my screen. But it is not visible, ma'am. Sir, uh, Pratap, sir, is it visible? Uh, now it's visible? Huh, now it's visible, ma'am. Okay. Now it's visible. So what exactly is post-approval change? Any change to, it is a, a language from the books. It's not my language. Any change to any aspect after approval of a pharmaceutical product, including but not limited to formulation method, site of manufacture, specification of a pharmaceutical product, ingredients, container closure, labeling, product information, safety updates. Any change we are doing once the formulation is approved comes under the post approval changes and we have to take the necessary concurrence and okay from the authorities so always it is a legal binding to uh, the marketing authorization holders to comply with the 
अप्रूव्ड वन जो हम सबमिट करते हैं हम उसको हमें उसको कंप्लाई करना है इफ वी वांट टू चेंज एनीथिंग वी हैव टू इन्फॉर्म टू द रिस्पेक्टिव अथॉरिटी वंस द अप्रूवल इज सॉर्ट देन ओनली वी कैन इंप्लीमेंट द चेंजेस लाइक इट्स नॉट लाइक दैट कि हमने चेंज कर दिया और उसको मार्केट में सेल करना स्टार्ट कर दिया नो वॉट एवर इज रिटर्न इन द बुक्स ऑफ द अथॉरिटी वॉट एवर इज विद द अथॉरिटी दैट इज अप्रूव अदरवाइज वॉट एवर चेंज वी वॉन्ट टू डू वी हैव टू इन्फॉर्म टू द अथॉरिटी एंड टेक देयर अप्रूवल वाया वेरिएशन द टर्म वेरिएशन इज यूज इन एशियन रीजन इन यूरोप वेयर एज इन यूएस वी यूज द टर्म supplements and in canada we use the level changes there are different level of changes that agency has uh, told so uh, why we do the post approval changes to meet the market requirement suppose uh, today there is a product that is having a uh, storage of 2 to 8 degree celsius uh, at the shelf but we want room temperature product market marketing guy is saying that prepare a product that is room temperature stable so obviously whole r&d will do that work to meet the market requirement because 2 to 8 degree product is not acceptable it increases the cost sometimes to enhance the product portfolio lyo product is available in the market but more acceptability is of liquid products to enhance the product portfolio same api is uh, manufactured into different products lyo product liquid product tablet capsule injection multiple products of the same api compliance compliance means sometimes there are changes in the usp sometimes there are update in the european pharmacopeia sometimes there are changes in the ip to meet the compliance we have to update our product like one thing i will like to tell you have you heard of this uh, heavy metal test anyone has heard what is this heavy metal test yes ma'am yeah. so heavy metal test you everyone know so do you know uh, are you still doing the heavy metal test in your university in first year heavy metal test are you doing it yes no no yes please repeat you said yes or no no ma'am no why you are not doing it it um, was i think limit test of lead limit test of iron arsenic it was like that it was qualitative why you are not doing it लिमिट टेस्ट परफॉर्म किए मैम लेकिन जो फाइट फार्माकोग्नोसिकल परपस से उस परपस से नहीं किए क्योंकि फाइट तो कॉल किया अह माय क्वेश्चन वाज लाइक दैट बिकॉज़ दीस डेज इन आवर एकेडमिया पीपल आर स्टिल डूइंग हेवी मेटल टेस्ट इन द करिकुलम एज़ वेल हेवी मेटल टेस्ट इज इंक्लूडेड बट एज़ ऑफ 2018 इट इज एन ऑब्सोलेट टेस्ट इंडस्ट्री इज नॉट डूइंग इट बिकॉज़ इट वाज अ क्वालिटेटिव टेस्ट if you could remember we could uh, compare the color of the solution with the color of the reference solution sirf hum color ko compare karte the it was just qualitative now the quantitative test has come in picture uh, ich guideline is there ich q3t is there and we are doing all the metals all the testing of all the elements quantitatively this is the compliance heavy metal test nahi hota it is an obsolete test okay industry is not doing it restoration of the product restoration means renewal of the product once the product is approved by the authority we have to submit the renewal of the product in europe it's every 5 years and uh, 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 at the end of the 5th year we have to submit the renewal and then the product is restored in the market endlessly betterment of the product sometimes uh, the product is prepared that is having alcohol inside it we have to prepare a product without alcohol maybe a lyo product is there we have to prepare liquid product maybe 2 to 8 degree product is there we have to pre prepare 25 degree product it's like that so these all changes come under post approval now coming to europe 
So there are different types of variation, administrative changes, like where we want to change the name of the company. We have to inform to the authority. We are changing the place of the company. We have to inform to the authority. We are doing any technical change, like change in the manufacturing process or change in the finished product specification, any change in the filter, any change in the tubing vendor, everything. Uh, apart from this, any change in the safety data, any change in the labeling, we have to inform to the authority. These are the different type of changes. And we have categorized these changes in the form of variation. Like type 1A, we say it in Europe, type 1A, type 1A, IN, type 1B, type 2 variations. And I'm naming that their category, type 1A, IN, type 1A, 1B, and type 2. Type 1A IN variation is like we can implement the change and we have to inform to the authority within 15 days of implementation. Within 15 days. We to change karna tha, humne usko change kar diya. But we have to inform to the authority within 15 days. Once we inform to the authority, agency provides the acceptance within 30 days. So approval timeline of this variation type 1 AIN is 30 days. So we call this type of variations is do and tell. Humne kiya aur bataya. Do and tell. Type 1 A variation. Type 1 A variation. These are similar to type 1 AIN. The difference is with respect to only timelines. In 1 AIN, we have to inform within 15 days. Whereas in type 1 A, we have to inform to the authority within 12 months of implementation. Suppose today is 16 Feb 2023. I have implemented some change. Right? So we I have to inform to the authority till 15th of Feb 2024. Ek salka time. Right? So for Taiwan A, IN and Taiwan A variations, we call them variations, but exactly these are not variations. These are sort of notifications. We have to inform to the authority. So you might be confused which changes are coming under type 1A, IN or type 1A. There is a variation guideline provided by the European authorities. It is uh, of 2013 guideline is there. They have categorized all the changes, whatever changes you can think of, all the changes are there in that guideline and we can dig out which classification will be there. This variation will fall under which category. So when you are day in and out into regulatory, just by seeing the change, you can categorize the change. It will be type 1A, IN, it will be type 1B, it will be type 2. Type 1B. Type 1B variation in which we have to inform to the authority first, then we have to wait for the approval. You cannot implement the change without approval. So uh, the timeline for this variation is 7 plus 30 days, 7 days whenever we are submitting it to the authority, there is a validation phase. Validation phase means 7 days of validation phase in which the authority checks whether the documentation uh, provided by the applicant is complete or not. Sometimes uh, some administrative document is missing. So they will ask the applicant to submit that uh, document. So they take timeline of 30 days. On paper, it is 30 days, but sometimes what happens when we are uh, submitting the change to the authority, well, it is seven days of validation phase. After that, agency will review it. There might be some uh, issues. Agency wants more data. They will send back the uh, package to the applicant. They will say, please provide this and this data. A timeline of 30 to 60 days will be provided to submit that data. Again, the marketing authorization holder will submit that data to the authority. They will take another 30 days. So sometimes uh, the approval timeline total, it takes four months approval. On paper, it is 37 days, but actually it takes four months approval. Now going to type two variation. Type two variations are the major variations. 
Major means any change in the like uh, relaxation of the finished product specification. Agency will ask why you want to relax the specifications of your finished product. Was there any out of specification data? Was your product not complying to the approved specifications? Any change in the safety criteria of the drug product? Any major change you can think of that is impacting the quality, safety, efficacy of the drug product will fall under the category of type 2. And approval timeline is 6 months and the fees is huge for type 2. The difference of uh, between all these variations is with respect to the approval timeline and fees. So a good regulatory person or a good formulator is that who prepares the product well, submit the dossier to the authority in a well manner so that least changes are expected. कम से कम चेंजेस हमें बाद में करने पड़े प्रोडक्ट इतना अच्छा बना हो उसका सबमिशन डोजियर भी इतना अच्छा बना हो कि चेंजेस हमें कम करने पड़े सो वन कैटेगरी इन यूरोप इज लाइक लाइन एक्सटेंशन लाइन एक्सटेंशन मींस ऑलरेडी अ कंपनी इज मैन्युफैक्चरिंग द लायो प्रोडक्ट दे वांट टू प्रिपेयर लिक्विड प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द सेम एपीआई सो इट विल नॉट Yes, it will not be considered as a separate product. It will be considered under line extension of the same molecule which was approved earlier. It comes under the category of line extension. And uh, you know, approval timeline in Europe for any product is 210 days fixed. Calendar may say time dekhte hai. Today I have submitted the dose here. 14 days of validation phase plus 210 days. At the end of the 200 day, product is approved. Whether the favorable opinion is coming or unfavorable, God knows, but the timeline is 210 days. And another 67 days of linguistic phase. In Europe, how many countries are there? Do you know? Your okay. screen should freeze, ma'am. I'm not, I'm not moving it. Okay, pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so, in uh, how many countries are there in Europe? Any idea? There are 30 countries in Europe. Remember this. 30 countries. We say it 27 plus 3 countries. 27 countries come in Europe exactly and 3 are the Nordic countries. Norway, Lindstein and uh, this uh, Iceland. These mm -hmm. little islands are in the beach. Mein. Upar Greenland ke paas. Three islands hai. They come under Europe only. Norway, Lindstein and Iceland. They come under Europe. So we call it, uh, it is 27 plus 3 countries. UK is part of European Union or not? Yes? No, ma'am. Yeah, right. UK is out of European Union since 2020. So this phase was called Brexit. Britain exiting the European Union. Brexit. So these are a few examples of Taiwan AI and variation. Although there is a huge example in uh, this variation guideline of Europe 2013, but I have taken few like... Uh, if there is any API vendor is approved or the, and there is an update in CEP, have you heard the name CEP? Have you heard the name CEP? No. CEP is Certificate of Suitability. In European Pharmacopoeia, so uh, do you know one thing in European uh, Pharmacopoeia, uh, Monographs of APIs are there or drug product are there or both are there? European Pharmacopoeia. European Pharmacopoeia is having the monographs of API only. APIs are there. Hamare European Pharmacopoeia mein drug product nahi hote. There are very, very less number of finished product uh, monograph in European pharmacopoeia. In US pharmacopoeia, it is there. 
but in European pharmacopoeia, only API monographs are there. Very less finished product, very, very less. So if any vendor of API is complying to the European pharmacopoeia and they are submitting the documentation to the EDQM, there is one authority, EDQM, they provide the certificate of suitability to that vendor for that API. Certificate of suitability means compliance to the European pharmacopoeia. This is a change, uh, type 1A IN category. Any uh, update in the CEP? So certificate of suitability may change kiya. API vendor ne, fir usne finished product manufacturer ko diya. He many change kar diya. So please submit this change to the authority. So that the category will be type 1A IN. So in the application form of all these changes, it is clearly specified which type of changes there. We have to tick that change. Type 1A IN hai, 1B hai, type 2 hai, type 1A, we have to tick that change. Now coming to the secondary packaging side. What is secondary packaging? Glass wire we are using, rubber stoppers we are using, blister packaging we are using. It is primary packaging or secondary packaging? Primary. Yeah, it is primary. Secondary packaging is like carton or aluminum flip off seal. Any packaging that is not coming in contact with the drug product comes under secondary packaging. Any change in the secondary packaging site will be type 1A IN variation because it is not directly impacting the drug product. Batch release site edition. In Europe, it is mandatory. If the suppose the product is manufactured in India, it will be tested in India, but we want to sell this product in Europe. If we want to sell that product in Europe, so the batch should be tested in Europe and then released in Europe. They don't rely on our testing. They rely only on European testing site. They again test the product and release the product in Europe. So any site edition related to batch release will be tied by the IM edition. US may not happen that way. US may product can be tested anywhere. GMP approved facility only it can be tested anywhere throughout the world. Suppose I am manufacturing the product in India, I don't have facility to test. I can take help of China. I can help take of Korea if they are GMP approved labs. We can test the product there and we can sell the product in US. Now coming to type 1A variation. Type A1 variation were also a do and tell variation. We have to implement the change and inform to the authority within 12 months of implementation. Few examples are there. Like batch control testing site. Any change in the batch control testing site, like before Brexit. UK was the site, uh, batch control testing site for many of the products. When UK was out of European Union, then all the marketing authorization holders, they had to take another site in Europe. And that change was categorized as type 1A variation. Any change in the testing methods, any minor change, suppose we are including any instruction in the testing method, maybe of API, maybe of finished product, then it will be categorized as type 1A. Right? No, now coming to type 1B variation. Type 1B variation, we have to tell the in authority and wait for the approval. These are just opposite to type 1A. A few examples are any minor change in the manufacturing process? Any change in the storage condition of the drug product, API? Like it was a 2 to 8 degree product and we have to change into maybe 15 to 30, 20 to 25. Any change in the storage condition? It will be type 1B. Manufacturing size change. 
any addition of any manufacturing site. I have manufacturing site in India. I want to sell my product in Europe. I want one more manufacturing site, maybe in China, maybe in Europe. So I have to add that site in my dossier. I have to inform to the authority and that change will be submitted to the authority via type one. Any extension in the shelf life of the product? Extension will be submitted as type 1B. Suppose I am having a shelf life of 18 months. I want to relax my shelf life up to 24 months. So, you can see that our product is also good. Earlier it was 18 months and now it is 24 months. So, we cannot implement the change. We have to show the data to the authority that the product is stable up to 24 months. So, that change will be submitted via type 1B. Now coming to type 2 variations. Type 2, these are the major variations. They are directly impacting the quality of the drug product. Like uh, relaxation of specification. We want to relax the specifications of the finished product. Just a few minutes back, I told you, agency will ask, why do you want to relax the specification? Why your uh, is your data is out of specifications, you want to relax the specification. Suppose I say that uh, monograph has come in Euro European pharmacopoeia or some uh, USP. I want to be in line with USP. I want to relax the specification. So it's up to uh, authority whether they are going to approve it or not. But the category will be tied to major variation and we have to wait for at least most of the time it takes six months for the approval. So any change in the sterilization method, suppose earlier it was aseptically sterilized, aseptic sterilization means filtration through 0.2 micron. And now I want to terminally sterilize it. Terminal sterilization means moist heat sterilization. I want to heat the product at 121 degrees Celsius with F0 value greater than 8 minutes or 15 minutes. So aseptic to TS, it will be a type 2 variation. Any change in the fill weight of the tablet? API will remain same. Same API quantity will be there, but I want to change the fill weight. It will be type 2. So we can categorize uh, seeing uh, whether the change is directly impacting the drug product, whether it is going to impact the safety, efficacy, quality. We can categorize the change, whether it will be type 1A, 1A, IN, type 1B, type 2. These are the type of changes that we can Submit to the European authority. Line extension. Initially, I told you what exactly is line extension. Suppose a uh, marketing authorization holder, he is having the 5 mg per ml strength that is approved. Now he want to change to 10 mg per ml. It will be line extension only. It will not be considered as new product. It will be the line extension of the earlier approved product only. Lyo product is uh, there. If you have heard the name of oncology molecule, Gemcitab in Gemcitab, Innovator has prepared initially a lyophilized product. Down the line, after a few years, he prepared liquid products. So many uh, general companies earlier, they prepared Lyo product, then liquid product. In liquid product also, there were many uh, uh, multiples were there, like 2 to 8 degree storage product, 2 to 8 degree storage with ethanol, 2 to 8 degree storage without ethanol. Then the room temperature stable product came with ethanol, without ethanol. So multiple variants came. So they were not considered as separate product in Europe. They were considered as line extension of the same molecule. So any change in the route of administration? Yeah. Product is intravenous, so I want to, we want to change this to intrathecal. Intrathecal is there, we change this to IV, then it will be line extension. So we have to think over whenever we are planning for any change, how they can be submitted to the authority. First, we have to think over, then the variation guideline is in front of us. We can open the variation gu guideline and check. 
अभी आपको लग रहा होगा कि इतने सारे चेंजेस होते हैं कि वो कैसे वेरिएशन गाइडलाइन में होते हैं वेरिएशन गाइडलाइन में सारे चेंजेस कवर होते हैं सारे वॉट एवर वी कैन थिंक ऑफ इट विल बी देयर इन द वेरिएशन गाइडलाइन सो ऑब्वियसली द वेरिएशन इज नॉट फ्री वेन एवर वी आर सबमिटिंग द वेरिएशन टू द अथॉरिटी दे आर टेकिंग द फीस फॉर द रिव्यू टू फिफ्टी थाउजेंड ये थोड़ी सी इंक्रीज हो गई है अभी फीस सो इट्स ऑफ मार्च अभी फिर से इंक्रीज हो जाएगी अप्रैल में फिर इंक्रीज होगी एवरी मार्च अप्रैल दे इंक्रीज द फीस अबाउट टेन परसेंट वन ए टू फिफ्टी थाउजेंड आई एन आर फाइव सिक्सटी फाइव थाउजेंड सिक्स एट्टी थाउजेंड यूरो रुपीज सिक्स लाख एटी थाउजेंड अभी बहुत फीस लगती है यूरोप में फॉर वेन एवर वी आर थिंकिंग ऑफ अ चेंज इट्स नॉट लाइक दैट दैट समबडी इज सेंग दैट मैनुफैक्चरिंग साइट इज सेंग कि हमें लाइव प्रोडक्ट है लिक्विड बनाना है हमें ग्लास वाइल वेंडर चेंज करना है वी वॉन्ट टू चेंज द फिल्टर वेंडर वहां से सस्ता मिल रहा है वी वॉन्ट टू चेंज द ट्यूबिंग वी वॉन्ट टू चेंज द मैनुफैक्चरिंग वेसल्स सो नथिंग कम्स फ्री वेन एवर वी आर थिंकिंग ऑफ अ चेंज थिंक ऑफ द कॉस्ट That it will it will be cost uh, it will be costed. So this is a sort of quiz. I am skipping this slide. So one term I used in Europe it was restoration of the product. Restoration of the product means renewal of the product. So uh, whenever. the marketing authorization is approved by the authority it is valid up to 5 years initially after 5 years the product is renewed but 9 months prior to the expiry of marketing authorization we have to submit the renewal application because agency takes approximately 9 months to again renew the product it's not like that ki 5 saal ke baad humne submit kiya at the end of the 5th year रिन्यूअली उसका एक्सपायरी हो गई प्रोडक्ट की तो प्रोडक्ट कैसे रिन्यू होगा तो हमें नाइन मंथ प्रायर करना है प्रायर टू द एक्सपायरी वी हैव टू सबमिट द रिन्यूअल एप्लीकेशन एंड वंस द प्रोडक्ट इज रिन्यूड इट इज हैविंग अनलिमिटेड वैलिडिटी सो एनी क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू यूरोप यू कैन प्लीज आस्क मी Please ask me if you want to ask anything. Yes, please. You want to ask anything? Yes. No ma'am. Okay. So now moving to. so now moving to us in us uh, as well we have to submit the changes but it, uh, we call those changes as uh, amendments or supplements in us europe mein hum variation bolte hain in asian we speak them as uh, variations but in us we call them as supplements so same change major change moderate change and minor change major change in europe it was type 2 variation in your us it is prior approval supplement one thing i will like to uh, tell you that in us uh, all the changes we are submitting to the authority they are without any charge no fees is charged for that for all the changes no fees but the fees of initial dosier is so high har saal wo 10% in it is in crores every year they increase approximately 10% so initial dosier new dosier fees is so high that they have uh, 
given the rebate in all these supplements. Major change like prior approval supplement. Prior approval supplement means is called them PAS, PAS, pass. We have to submit the change to the authority and we have to wait. Like the name in the prior approval, we have to take the prior approval from the authority. Supplement. Review timeline. I have written six months, oblique 10 months. Six months means if the uh, site is already GMP approved, no site inspection is required in case that change will be uh, approved within six months or in, uh, in case GMP inspection of the site is required, that change will be approved in 10 months. And suppose we want to uh, want that uh, authority should approve uh, this change as fast as possible, then we can request for the expedited review, giving the reason, suppose the pro product is uh, having public shortage or it is maybe due to some endemic, epidemic uh, or pandemic, we can request authority to review it fast, but the review timeline is reduced only for two months, six months to four months and 10 months to eight months. They will take this much time. Now coming to moderate change. Uh, moderate change, these are the two type of changes. We say it as CBE0 and CBE30. CBE0 means uh, the moment we are thinking of a change, we submit the change to the authority and then we can implement. Batana hai uske baad usi time, the moment we inform to the authority, we can implement the change. CB30. CB30, we have to inform to the authority, but we have to wait for 30 days for the approval to come. We 30 days to wait for So at the end of the 30th day, they will uh, say that your CBE 30 is uh, accepted. Now third category is minor change. Minor change means annual reportable changes. Like uh, if there is any change in the documentation of the manufacturing site, like template of the batch records, or if there is any change in the color of the flip off seal, any change in the uh, specifications as per USP, it will be annual reportable change. Now, we changed our heavy metal test. Heavy metal test was up, an update as per US uh, pharmacopoeia. It was removed. Heavy metal test was removed as per USP. So industry was saying this change will be annual reportable. Annual report submit kiya. But in a meeting, it was uh, in uh, this uh, American Association of Medicine in uh, 2019. I was a part of that meeting and it was discussed. It was in Baltimore, near Baltimore. And they said, that these uh, industries requested not to submit this change as an annual report. As a guideline, it is annual reportable because it is in pharmacopoeial update. But please don't submit, is, uh, submit this change as annual report. Please submit this change as CBE 30 because you will remove the heavy metal test and you need to carry out elemental impurity risk assessment that your uh, product is free of uh, elements. After product, there are no elements. Nahi hai. You have to show it. So uh, annual reports are generally not reviewed by the authority. They review the report only when they come for the inspection. Unke baas jati hai, wo padhi jati hai. They don't see it. But they, when they come for inspection, they open it and check all the changes. Ki humne annual report mein changes kaun kaun se da hai. So we would like to see how you have removed this heavy metal test and instead of heavy metal test, you are doing elemental impurity risk assessment. That's why they requested, please submit it as CBE 30. Again and again, in every day meeting, they were saying, please submit CB 30, please submit CB 30. We are not going to review the annual reports. And don't say that we have submitted that uh, heavy metal test. We also submitted it. I was uh, in industry at that time. We submitted that change as annual reportable change. 
I ask the question that although we have submitted it as annual report, can we submit this change again as CV30? They said, yes, please submit it as CV30 when we are back. So these are the few examples of PAs, prior approval supplement. Prior approval supplement means major changes. So whatever changes we categorize in Europe as type 2 variation, they will be considered as PAs in US. Like any change in the composition, any change in the sterilization method, any deletion of specification parameter, they will be considered as PAs. Change in container closure system. Obviously, container is directly impacting the drug product in case of parenteral. Have you heard the term glass delamination? Anyone has heard the name glass delamination? Yes, please. You have not heard. See, glass delamination is a new concept in which uh, the lamellae from the glass vial is coming in the drug product. Glass ke chute chute flakes na, mari vial mein aajate, they are not visible by naked eyes. There are special cameras to see those uh, lamination. Small flakes are there. So any change in container closure system, we have to evaluate, tell the shelf life that there should be no glass lamina inside the vial. Extractable, leachables, there are many uh, things that play the role. Extractables, leachables, glass delamination. So what is the difference between extract, uh, extractables and leachables? You know the difference between the two? Yes. No, I, I don't think so. Anyone knows. So extractable uh, is under harsh condition. Anything that is coming out in the solution under harsh condition, whereas leachable that comes in the solution over the shelf life. We keep it, we keep it, we keep it, we keep it, shelf life 24 months. Ki hai. Room temperature storage product, we left it. What is the 24 months mein, ya over the shelf life uh, while ke andar aega, that will be leachable. Leach ho gaya, rakhe, rakhe. If you are not using good glass wires, not good plastic containers, sodium may come in the solution. Or um, in case of extractable, what we do, we want to know whether we have whether the uh, container we have selected for the drug product is right or not. We do extractable studies. That means we take the solutions that mimic the actual solution of the drug product. We have three types of solvents, le lete, maybe uh, acidic solution, maybe uh, some alkaline solution, water, whatever we want to uh, do, we mimic the drug product and prepare the solution and we keep the container in contact with that solution that comes uh, that is extractable. So this is the difference between extractable and leachables. So you have uh, learned the three terms, delamination, extractables, leachables, right? Elemental impurity also. So CB30 means uh, in the CB30 I told you that we can implement the change uh, we cannot implement the change. We have to inform to the authority. Then we have to wait for 30 days for the approval. Acknowledgement to come. Like any deletion of test to comply with the pharmacopoeia. This I have already discussed heavy metal test. Although it is annual reportable, any USP updates are annual reportable. But this was a specific case. And agency has requested to submit this uh, as uh, CB30. Any change in the sterilization method, any change in size and shape of the container, it can be CB30. And any uh, primary packaging site for solid orals is CB30. These are just few examples. There are multiple examples in the guidelines. Multiple examples you can think of. CB0, 
Any change in the label? Labeling updates are considered as CB0. Suppose the product is terminally sterilized and also we are uh, filtering the product through 0.2 micron filter and we want to omit that step 0.2 micron filter. We don't want to filter the product directly. We want to TS the product. So it, it can be CB0 because uh, we are already terminally sterilizing it. So no need to filter to, through 0.2 micron. Any change in the uh, secondary packaging site of the solid oil, it will be CB0. So annual reportable change. These are few examples like uh, USP updates, any GMP documentation update like change in the batch records, revision of batch records, SOP, any format change, tightening of the acceptance criteria, relaxation of the specifications will be PAs and tightening of uh, acceptance strategy of the specifications will be annual reportable because agency is always happy we are tightening the specifications of the drug product or API. Any change in supplier of the excipient, provided specification should remain same, it will be annual reportable. <clears throat> the drug product manufacturing side change. If the GMP the site is GMP approved. Suppose one of my site is in uh, India. I am manufacturing the product in India. It is GMP approved. But now I want to manufacture my product, same product in US. I want to change the site. Right? If uh, the second site in US is GMP approved, then I can submit it as CV30. It will take just 30 days to approve. In case the site is not GMP approved, in that case, prior approval supplement needs to be submitted. It will take six months to approve, six months to 10 months for approval. Although uh, any site change is a very big change, but it depends on GMP clearance. If GMP clearance is available, it is CB30, otherwise it will be uh, PAS. So uh, I'm going to discuss only US and Europe because these are the major changes that we come across. I'm not going to discuss with uh, Canada and Asia. If anyone has any doubt, you may please ask me or anything related to industry, industrial department, you may please ask. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Actually, I'm not able to see the participants. Uh, how I can see? I'm not able to see anyone. Yeah. So anything else you want specifically? Dr. Eka, I think you are on mute. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you are audible and uh, 75 participants are connected right now. So please ask if you want anything. Please don't hesitate for anything related to interview, related to questions, related to departments. So whenever you enter industry, we consider you as a raw people. We give you training. Even uh, the students are taught how to handle the pipette, how to handle weighing balance, how to handle pH meter. Training is given on each and every equipment and instrument. Yes, ma'am. So please don't hesitate. So one, uh, one thing, uh, students have confusion between uh, R&D, uh, maybe analytical, maybe QC, bhoat confusion hota hai, hota hai ki nahi hota hai? R&D ko, hai na, hota hai, R&D ko hum sirf formulation samajhte hai. 
एनी कंफ्यूजन की आपको पता है सबको कंफ्यूजन रहता है और सबसे बड़ी इसमें एक और यही चीज है कि हम लोग भी एकेडमिया में जो शुरू से हैं वो लोग भी बेटर गाइड नहीं कर पाते स्टूडेंट्स को इस तरह के कंफ्यूजन के केस में तो पता है क्या होता है दो चीजें होती है इंडस्ट्री में एक होती है मैन्युफैक्चरिंग साइट एंड वन इज आर एनडी ना मैन्युफैक्चरिंग साइट को हम बाद में कंसिडर करेंगे आर एनडी में देर आर डिफरेंट डिपार्टमेंट इन आर एनडी है ना फॉर्मुलेशन डेवलपमेंट एनालिटिकल डेवलपमेंट रेगुलेटरी डिपार्टमेंट आई पी आर क्लिनिकल प्री क्लिनिकल फार्मोको विजिलेंस है ना डिफरेंट डिपार्टमेंट होते हैं क्वालिटी एश्योरेंस क्वालिटी कंट्रोल डिपार्टमेंट आर एनडी का पार्ट नहीं होता आर एन डी में जो होता है एनलिटिकल डेवलपमेंट होता है तो जितने भी आप जैसे फार्मास्यूटिक्स के लोग हो रेगुलेटरी हो हमारे क्यू ए के लोग हैं या आई पी आर के लोग हैं जितने भी हैं दे ऑल हैव ऑपरचुनिटीज इन आर एन डी तो ये नहीं सोच रहे कि फार्मास्यूटिक्स वाले लोग ही आर एन डी में जाएंगे तो सारे डिपार्टमेंट है इंडस्ट्री में सो यू कैन गो टू एनी डिपार्टमेंट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग में आई वुड नॉट रिकमेंड एनी वन टू ज्वाइन आफ्टर डूइंग एम फॉर्म मैन्युफैक्चरिंग साइट सम मैन्युफैक्चरिंग साइट्स आर पेइंग वेरी गुड बट प्रॉब्लम वहां पे कि 24 फोर आवर्स की शिफ्ट चलती है आर एन डी में ऐसा नहीं होता आर एन डी सुबह शुरू होती है शाम तक होती है अगर आपका काम है यू आर डूइंग यूर वर्क जुडिशियसली आप टाइम से घर जा सकते हो बट मैनुफैक्चरिंग साइट पे शिफ्ट में काम चलता है वहां पे कोई आर एन डी नहीं होती वहां पे तो जितने भी डिपार्टमेंट आर एन डी के हैं रेगुलेटरी है आई पी आर है दे आर ऑल पार्ट ऑफ रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट खाली एक डिपार्टमेंट आर एन डी नहीं कर सकता फॉर्मुलेशन नहीं कर सकता उसको रेगुलेटरी की सपोर्ट चाहिए कि एजेंसी की एक्सपेक्टेशन क्या है गाइडलाइन क्या बोलती है मुझे प्रोडक्ट कैसे डेवलप करना है मेरे को टर्मिनल स्टेलाइज करना है कि ये सेफ्टी करना है स्पेसिफिकेशन क्या होंगी ड्रग प्रोडक्ट की सो रेगुलेटरी पीपल विल हेल्प दैम आईपीआर उन्हें बताएगा कि आपको जो पेटेंट ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्टिंग है ड्रग प्रोडक्ट के या जेनरिक प्रोडक्ट को आपको ओवरकम कैसे करना है क्लिनिकल टीम बताएगी कि इस प्रोडक्ट के क्लिनिकल ट्रायल चाहिए कि नहीं चाहिए प्री क्लिनिकल आपको एनिमल स्टडीज के बारे में बताएगी एंटिकल डेवलपमेंट जो डिपार्टमेंट है दे विल टेस्टिंग ऑफ द ड्रग प्रोडक्ट दे विल वैलिडेट द मेथड तो सारे के सारे आर एन डी इनोवेशन में इन्वॉल्व है जितने डिपार्टमेंट है आर एन डी में इट्स नॉट सिंगल डिपार्टमेंट This combined effect, uh, effort of all the departments. So, इतने सारे डिपार्टमेंट मिलके काम करते हैं और एक बच्चे जब इंडस्ट्री में जाते हैं ना आप लोग क्या बोलते हो बड़े ओवर कॉन्फिडेंट होते हो जब आप इंटरव्यू देते हो आपको लगता है कि किसी ने क्वेश्चन पूछा सामने वाले ने तो हम सब सब क्वेश्चन के आंसर दे दें ऐसा नहीं करना है नहीं आता तो बोल दो हमें नहीं आता ही है दो वी हैव रेड इट बट आई डोंट रिमेंबर इट नाउ वो बेटर है मना कर दो गलत बोलने से अच्छा बिकॉज द पर्सन सिटिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू कैन इजीली जज दे जस्ट सी योर एटीट्यूड ये तो मैम बहुत बार डिस्कस करते हैं हम लोग खास तौर से टीसी से एक्टिविटीज में कि बी ऑनेस्ट और ये चीज बहुत मुश्किल है बच्चे आजकल थोड़ा बच्चे मानते नहीं है अपने की कोशिश करते हैं तो बहुत सारे बच्चे तो ऐसे ही छूट जाते हैं वो टेक्निकल उनको बहुत सारा आता भी होगा तो सिर्फ एटीट्यूड की वजह से जो हमारे बाकी टीम में उनके साथ वो रह ही नहीं पाएगी hmm, तो हमें उसको लिया ही नहीं hmm. कि उसमें टीम स्पिरिट नहीं है वो इंडिविजुअल थी तो एटीट्यूड देखना है सबको योर एटीट्यूड शुड बी राइट यू शुड बी पॉजिटिव यू शुड बी हम्बल डाउन टू अर्थ वेन यू आर गिविंग द इंटरव्यू और कोई ऐसी चीज मैम जो आपको फील होती है कि मतलब ड्यूरिंग इंटरव्यू द स्टूडेंट शुड टेक केयर ऑफ मतलब ऑनेस्ट रहना है बिल्कुल और जब आपसे इंटरव्यू लेते हैं सबसे पहले ना आपसे पर्सनल पूछते हैं आपका रीजन क्या होता है पर्सनल पूछने का ताकि आपको लगे कि इंटरव्यू मेरे मेरे जैसा ही है कनेक्ट हाँ कनेक्ट अच्छा हो जाए इंटरव्यूर और आपका ना वेरी सिंपल एंड वेल ड्रेस्ड 
you know you should not wear very high heels when you are giving your interviews ki pata lag raha interview den jara tak tak girls kya karti hai badi heel pehen ke jati hai and tak 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 aawaz jati hai and nobody in industry likes that hmm these are few small small things industry people observe hmm they want very simple people very down to earth technically good but should not be over smart गुड लर्निंग एबिलिटी आप मतलब ये भी होना चाहिए कि सीखना भी है और पैसे को लेके कभी भी इंडस्ट्री में वो नहीं करना कि स्टार्टिंग में जब आप क्या वो पूछते हैं इज इट नेगोशिएबल यस यू से इट इज नेगोशिएबल इंडस्ट्री का जितना होता है ना नॉर्म्स उतने वो देते ही हैं उससे ज्यादा नहीं देंगे उससे कम नहीं देंगे आपको तो कभी भी पैसे को लेके इंडस्ट्री में बहस नहीं करते बहुत ज्यादा ये भी रहता है मैम बिगनिंग में जैसे पैकेज कम आ, मतलब होता है एंट्री नहीं होती तो स्टूडेंट्स कई बार उस पर उस वक्त लगता है उन्हें कि भाई कम है बट तो वही है कि एक बार वो दे शुड टेक इट लाइक इंटर्नशिप की भी एक बार एंट्री होगी है दे वुड लर्न और फिर मतलब वो चीज बेटर हो ही जाती है फोर फाइव ईयर्स में अब जितना मतलब मैं भी इस चीज में इन्वॉल्व हूँ भाई डिस्कस करती हूँ तो फोर फाइव ईयर्स में मतलब एक अच्छे पोजीशन पे बच्चे पहुंच हाँ, पाते आ जाते हो और एक आपकी कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स बहुत अच्छी होनी चाहिए मे बी आप लोग जैसे प्लेसमेंट में हो व्हाट यू ऑल कैन डू कि जैसे हमारे हिसार की साइड ना थोड़ी सी हरियाणवी चलती है है हाँ, ना और आई थिंक वो बच्चों की लैंग्वेज में भी आ जाती है एक्सेंट में भी आ जाता है ना एक्सेंट में आ जाती है तो अच्छी इंडस्ट्री दे डू ऑब्जर्व द कम्युनिकेशन की बहुत सारी कंपनीज होती है क्लाइंट बेस्ड होती है है ना कंसल्टेंसी हैं दे आर क्लाइंट बेस्ड तो एक्सपेक्ट करते हैं कि बच्चे एक बच्चे कम्युनिकेशन अच्छी है जैसे हमारे दिल्ली साइड में बच्चों की सबकी कम्युनिकेशन अच्छी है सबकी अच्छी है ना दिल्ली में तो बहुत सारी कंपनीज यहाँ पे कंसल्टेंसी वाली आती है एंड दे आर गिविंग वेरी गुड पैकेज छे साढ़े छे बारह लाख तक का भी पैकेज है यहाँ पे कंसल्टेंसी में एक मरी है ये बैंगलोर में है क्लैरी अगर आप सबने नाम सुना होगा दे आर ऑल्सो गिविंग वेरी गुड पैकेज टेक्निकल कुछ नहीं है वो भी कंसल्टेंसी बेस्ड ही है क्लाइंट बेस्ड कंपनी है क्लैरिवेट हमारा एक बी फॉर्म का बच्चा वहां पे गया वन ईयर एक्सपीरियंस पे एंड शी इज गेटिंग फोर्टीन लैख एंड डेट टू वर्क फ्रॉम होम जस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ हर एटीट्यूड बिकॉज ऑफ हर कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स शी बॉट उसका जीपेड क्वालिफाई नहीं हुआ था शी वॉज द ओनली गर्ल वॉज नॉट क्वालिफाइड बट शी वॉज गुड इन स्टडीज कम्युनिकेशन एक्स्ट्रा करिकुलर में ज्यादा रहती थी Hmm. उसका हुआ नहीं तो टेंशन में भी थी तो वहां पे ज्वाइन किया कंपनी में एक साल बाद छोड़ा उसने क्लैरिवेट फोर्टी लैक प्लेसमेंट इज कंसर्न इज डूइंग वेरी वेरी मतलब मैं तो बच्चों से पूछती हूँ तो प्लेसमेंट uh, काफी अच्छी जाती है डिप्स रू एक्चुअली डिप्स रू की वो नहीं है रीजन भी हम एक्चुअली सेंटर में है ओके हाँ इजिली एक्सेसिबल है ऐसा नहीं बच्चे आपके भी अच्छे हैं बराबर ही हैं बच्चे सारे बट दिल्ली है या कंपनीज आ जाती हैं हाँ ये भी एक पॉजिटिव हाँ, दिल्ली इट्सल्फ में बहुत सारी कंपनीज है बच्चे खुद भी ढूंढ लेते हैं नहीं मिलता तो कहीं ना कहीं मिली जाती है यहाँ पे हिसार से निकलना मुश्किल हो जाता है इजिली एक्सेसिबल नहीं है कंपनीज नहीं पता चलती है So what you can do, you can apply online. बहुत सारी कंपनीज है ऑनलाइन अप्लाई कर दो उनपे पोर्टल होता है सारी कंपनीज पे एंड देख कंसिडर दूस हर कंपनी की वेबसाइट पे पोर्टल है यू अपलोड योर रिज्यूम जिनका नहीं होता है प्लेसमेंट सेल के थ्रू वहां पे अपलोड करो एनी क्वेरी फ्रॉम स्टूडेंट एनी अदर क्वेरी नहीं नहीं की रेगुलेटरी का एक्सपीरियंस आउटसाइड इंडिया कितना वर्क है व्हाट यू आर आस्किंग मैं एक्सपीरियंस इन इंडिया इन दी आर डॉक्टर रेखा मुझे समझ में नहीं आया एक्सपीरियंस इन इंडिया इंडिया क्या बोल रहे हो दोबारा से रिपीट करो बच्चे मैं ये कहना चाह रहा हूँ कि 
रेगुलेटरी अफेयर्स के अंदर इंडिया का इंडिया के अंदर जब हम जॉब करते हैं तो उसके एक्सपीरियंस के बेस पे आउटसाइड इंडिया जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटीज मैम ही इज आस्किंग कि अगर किसी को इंडिया में ड्रग रेगुलेटरी का एक्सपीरियंस है तो उस एक्सपीरियंस के बेसिस पे आउट ऑफ इंडिया जॉब ऑप्शंस कैसे रहती हैं देखो इंडिया में भी ना दो तरीके की चीजें हैं इफ यू आर हैविंग एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ इंडियन रेगुलेटरी ना अगर इंडियन रेगुलेटरी का एक्सपीरियंस है आपको सी का है या स्टेट लाइसेंसिंग अथॉरिटी का है तो ऑब्वियसली उसकी बाहर डिमांड नहीं है बट इफ यू आर वर्किंग इन मल्टी नेशनल कंपनीज दो आर वर्किंग फॉर यूएस दो आर वर्किंग फॉर यूरो ऑब्वियसली यू आर इन डिमांड एक हमारे रेगुलेटरी में एक रैप्स का टेस्ट होता है रेगुलेटरी प्रोफेशनल सोसाइटी का बड़ा डिफिकल्ट टेस्ट होता है इफ यू आर रैप्स क्वालिफाइड तो यूएस तो आपको आराम से ले जाता है ये यूएस का ही टेस्ट होता है तो अगर आपको यूएस का एक्सपीरियंस है यूरोप का एक्सपीरियंस है तो आपको कोई भी ले लेता है बाहर बट आपके पास वीजा की प्रॉब्लम भी तो होती है ऐसा नहीं कि आपको एक्सपीरियंस है और एनीवन विल टेक वीजा आपको अरेंज करना है अपना बट यू हैव एन अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड इफ यू आर पीएचडी सपोज यू आर पी तो यूएस में जैसे हमारे इंडिया में तो वो बेचारा साइंटिस्ट ही लगता है पीएचडी करके बट इन यूएस डायरेक्टली दैट पर्सन विल बी अपॉइंटेड एज डायरेक्टर ये भी मैम प्रॉब्लम देखने में आ रही है लास्ट फ्यू ईयर से uh, मतलब जो पीएचडी कैंडिडेट्स हैं उनको उतनी ऑप्शंस नहीं है और कुल मिला के फिर वो घूम फिर के टीचिंग को ही मतलब ऑप्ट करते हैं या फिर बाहर पीडीएफ के लिए ट्राई करते हैं हाँ एक्चुअली इंडस्ट्री पता है क्या है पीएचडी करने के बाद ना मतलब थोड़ा सा हेडअप हो जाता है हर कैंडिडेट का की मैं पी एच मैं पी बट वो होता रॉ ही है सबको पता है चीज कि कितना कर लेते हैं पीएचडी में तो इंडस्ट्री ज्यादा फिफ्टी सिक्सटी थाउजेंड ऊपर दे देगी उसको एम फॉर्म से उससे ज्यादा नहीं तो बट वो उसको पीएचडी करने का लगता है कि मैं डायरेक्टर लग जाऊं या मैं सीनियर मैनेजर लग जाऊं तो वो इंडस्ट्री इंडिया में नहीं देती है कभी बट उसकी वैल्यू बाहर जरूर होती है यूएस में लेते हैं यूरोप में भी ले लेते हैं उसको इफ यू आर डॉक्टरेट क्योंकि हम वहां पे यूएस में पीएचडी इतनी इजीली नहीं कर पाते लोग ना कि हमारे यूरोप में कर पाते हैं सो दे टेक अस वेरी इजीली एंड वी आर हाईली पेड देयर बट फिर वही है कि दे नीड टू हैव पेशेंस और इनिशियली दे शुड आल्सो ज्वाइन की बाकियों की तरह वो ज्वाइन कर ले सीखे वहां पर लर्न करे और विद द पैसेज ऑफ टाइम देन दे कैन मूव हां जी पीएचडी के बाद ये एक्सपेक्ट मत करो कि इंडस्ट्री आपको बहुत हाई पोजीशन पे ले लेगी या बहुत हाई सैलरी दे देगी ऐसा कुछ नहीं है बट हां और पीएचडी है तो कहीं ना कहीं उसका बेनिफिट कभी ना कभी तो मिलता ही है अगर आप डेफिनेटली होता हां जी है ना ठीक है अभी इंडस्ट्री में नहीं मिलता उसका कोई इंडस्ट्री को एम फॉर्म पीएचडी सब बराबर है इंडस्ट्री में तो हम्म इंडस्ट्री किस पे चलती है की आपका करंट सी टी सी कॉस्ट टू कंपनी कितना है उस बेसिस पे आपको नेक्स्ट कंपनी में जॉब मिलती है उससे फोर्टी परसेंट हाइट मिल गया फिफ्टी परसेंट थर्टी परसेंट लाइक दैट बट इंडस्ट्री में जाना है तो मेहनत करनी पड़ती है ऐसा नहीं कि शौक चढ़ता है इंडस्ट्री में जाने का इंडस्ट्री जितने पैसे देती है उससे ज्यादा आपका ले लेती है वो तो पैसे कुछ भी नहीं लगते फिर लास्ट में एक स्टेज ऐसी आती है तब लगता है पैसे ले लो सब जिंदगी दे दो सुखी ये है तब इंडस्ट्री पीपल आर आपको लगता होगा ना दे आर वेरी हाई हेडेड इट्स नॉट लाइक दे आर वेरी डाउन टू अर्थ क्योंकि उन्होंने जिंदगी अपनी इंडस्ट्री में निकाल दी वहां पे सुबह से शाम तक रात को स्ट्रेस रहता है दिन में स्ट्रेस रहता है पूरी लाइफ ही वहां पे चलती है वेरी स्ट्रेसफुल लाइफ तो और कुछ सोचने का वक्त ही नहीं होता कि आपके बारे में ज्यादा सोचे आप इंटरव्यू देने जाते हो सिर्फ एटीट्यूड देखते देन दे टेक यू any other query from any other student or we should wind off but still i discuss only 50% what i planned <laughs> so actually online 
फिर है वो वो ही जाता है कि आ, मतलब उस तरह से चीजें डिस्कस नहीं हो पाती बट इवन देन बेनिफिट्स भी बहुत हैं अब कई बार टाइम नहीं होता तो हम लोग कर पाते हैं ऑनलाइन मतलब ये ना मे बी सम अदर डे वी कैन डिस्कस फॉर कनाडा वी कैन डिस्कस फॉर अदर रीजंस और मे बी अदर इश्यूज वी कैन डिस्कस डेफिनेटली मैम थैंक यू एंड All the best to everyone for B farms for M farm if any PhD student is there. For my best best wishes for all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for this wonderful interaction. And uh, of course, uh, you you are here with us, and uh, you accepted our invitation. for uh, this online lecture <laughs> although we are planning it from long back yeah <laughs> it has last two years we are we are planning so <laughs> it, it has been matured now uh, thank you so much or yeah, thank you the time ke baad main aapko dekh bhi payi yes sheetan are you there sheetan आपका कनेक्ट है बच्चे अशोक एक बार चेक करो शीतल है कनेक्टेड हेलो अशोक आर यू देयर नो मैम पेपर इज नॉट हियर अच्छा ओके यू कैन प्रोसीड फॉर बोथ ऑफ टाइम शीतल है तो है आई थिंक शीतल सरदाना तो है बट आई थिंक कोई नहीं अशोक यू कैन प्रोसीड ओके थैंक यू रेखा मैम इट्स माय प्लेजर टू प्रेजेंट वोट ऑफ थैंक्स एक्नोलेज द कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ एवरीवन हु वर्क्स रियली हार्ड टू मेक दिस गैस लेक्चर सक्सेसफुल फर्स्टली है हार्डफुली हार्डफुली थैंक्स टू आवर गेस्ट ऑफ टुडे Today, today's event, Dr. Minakshi Jagna, for sparing her precious time for the students and making us to learn so many new things like post-approval activities, monograph in European Pharmacopoeia, European Renewal Application, validity of products, glass delamination, and some interview tips, and also the uh, rest test, uh, which is which will conducted uh, for the. various regulatory jobs we are very thankful to training and placement cell of our university for their collaboration in organizing such kind of informative guest lecture for the students training and placement cell always keeps on supporting the students and organizing such kind of useful webinars i would like to thank director of training and placement cell uh, sri pratap sri pratap malik sir and the whole team of industry and action club i would also like to thank the chairperson of our department of pharmaceutical sciences professor sumitra singh for guiding and motivating us for such kind of event now i would like to thank uh, dr sunil simhasar and dr rekha rao ma'am and all the teachers of department for planning such kind of events for the students a great thanks to the organizing team dev mon from m pharma and uh, Rohit from the Pharma Second Year. An event is incomplete without the participation of the students. So I would like to thank all the students for attending today's guest lecture and hope you all have learned a lot on lot in today's guest lecture. Last but not least, I would say the ending of one chapter is just uh, beginning of another one. So read on and keep learning. Again, heartfully thanks to all. Have a nice day. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Ashok, and thank you, Dr. Rekha. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. I think I can leave now. Uh, yes, ma'am. 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 Yes, 
हो गया आशु थैंक यू ऑल थैंक यू सो मच मैम Thank you.